Hey internet, I'm Simon Squibb, your host at the Good Luck Club podcast. Our mission is to help anybody out there that's thinking of starting a business do just that. Equally, if you've started a business and are struggling, maybe you need a little bit of inspiration and knowledge. And we hope by interviewing some of the world's most successful entrepreneurs and change makers that you'll get the knowledge you need to become the person you want and turn your business into that dream company. I personally have started 17 companies from scratch and have invested in over 65 startups. When I sat down and analyzed how I did it, I discovered a secret. It was all luck. I'm here to tell you, in my opinion, without luck, it ain't gonna work. Each week, I will discuss with my guests this theory and see if luck is a skill as I feel that it is. I hope you enjoy our episode this week. Welcome to this week's episode of the Good Luck Club podcast. I have two fantastic entrepreneurs with me today, Heidi and Kali, CEO and COO, co-founders of Cache. Hi guys, welcome to the club. Thank you very much for joining. Hi. Hi, great to be here. Well, thanks. Um, Well, maybe you could start off by just telling our audience a little bit about you both. So, who who starts? I I can say a few words. my background goes, I'm Hedy, CEO of Cache. Uh, my background goes very much uh, connected everything with IT and uh, financials. I used to work in a bank for many years and, and uh, before that I did uh, different uh, IT, IT sales, uh, sales work. And uh, yeah, one of my biggest passion is um, uh, everything connected with person-centric data. So I'm 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 really keen to see more and more personalization coming into different uh, different uh, services. Cool. Okay. And I'm Kalle. Uh, my background goes to uh, public sector and uh, politics. I was a four times uh, elected member of Estonian Parliament. Uh, Estonia is a country which is the probably the most digitized country in in EU, if not in the world. And um, I was, um, while my years in Parliament, I was uh, involved in many of the legal initiatives uh, to 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 get our country in a more uh, digitized track. Yeah, I was I was reading about you both, but uh, just reading about you, Kelly, you're the youngest elected member of the Estonian Parliament, being elected at the age of twenty-one. Yeah, I was I was still, uh, you know. Having a good time at 21, I feel like being a, an elected member of the Estonian parliament um, would, would not be what I was doing at 21. Yeah, but it was a good time as well. So Oh, totally. <laughs> I want, I w- well, I'd like to get into it in the, in the podcast. Well, I'd like to start off the podcast by just understanding you both a little bit on a, on a personal level. And I'd love to hear from you guys what you think success is. Maybe, Hedy, you could start. Okay. Uh, so from my side, uh, success uh, is is probably uh, maybe the main way to uh, describe success for me would be to succeed um, uh, some of your your own ambitions um, or your own goals, and um, and uh, in a way to act, to change something for good. Uh, I think today's world there's lots of um, lots of uh, uh, people trying to accomplish something. Uh, uh, for just uh, in, in, in it to get attention, but I think for me, success would be to really uh, change some something uh, for good. Is it then in insurance world, or is it uh, uh, something in a country, or, or 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 something along that line? Very interesting. And for me as well, I mean, uh, connecting your dreams with something good for the uh, for the world in 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 that sense. Uh, would be something that I would uh, call success. And how did you end up being co-founders in this business? Um, I think we both probably were somewhat restless in in a good way of what we were doing. Um, So uh, we were trying to probably run faster than maybe some of the some of the organizations or, or uh, where we were at, at least that was, uh, that was the case uh, for me. Um, so when you see the world passing, passing faster than you see maybe around and you, you see, I, I know, and I, I have something I really want to do. And I, I feel I have something to contribute. So, um, 
this was the kind of drive I had and very much everything connected. As, as I said, I worked in a bank and I, I, I did few startups. Um, one startup especially connected with person-centric data where we connected kind of IoT data with the planetary data. Uh, and, and I saw how little people are benefiting today, the kind of data trails they leave behind. It's mainly used to get fantastic ads, but, uh, but I think there is so much more uh, that we could uh, use the data for. And, and this was some of the passion that um, we were introduced, that there's something you, you guys need to talk about. And having, having lots, of, lots of lunches and discuss, discussions, we ended up actually to Kashe. Wow, okay. I mean, one, one way to do something good for your community, for your country or for the world is definitely go to, go to politics. But uh, and this was let's say something that I de decided to do in uh, in the early 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 ages of uh, of mine, and I spent uh, there quite a lot of time comparing the let's say normal uh, normal time uh, of let's say of a young person spending in in in, in one place uh, where where they work. So 12, 12 and a half years is is quite long time. Uh, but uh, but I I guess that today um, it's so much faster to do something good for the world or to change something in uh, in, in in the startup world because uh, I mean uh, the speed that uh, that the startups are scaling and let's say they are generating the new new kind of uh, businesses is uh, is definitely tremendous and and uh, we the, the politics nowadays have. Have its own challenges, but uh, but yeah, I guess that uh, it's so much easier and faster uh, ways of of doing something good in in the in the private sector. Yeah, I think both of you have an interesting background. Where Hedy, you've been fifteen years in international management, and Kelly, you know, twelve years, as you say, twelve plus years in, in in government. It's quite a big change to do a startup. What what's the transition been like? <laughs> I don't think. I think it's two ways to look at it. One is that it's um, the kind of uh, the whole background uh, and the history has been a kind of a journey towards uh, towards doing maybe something like that. Um, so um, I think my experience in working with some of the biggest uh, biggest kind of players via one other company like Apple and Nokia in the world, and really seeing the kind of edge of innovation and, and at the same time really understanding that. Uh, what are the showstoppers of uh, of some things to even move faster? Uh, and and the other on the other angle, understanding why in in the large kind of bank, understanding why some processes are slow, why actually this kind of conservative approach in in the financial world is is good. Uh, and and I think from there you start kind of my my maybe slight frustration in in understanding that. Lots of things can be so much better, and why? What are the reasons why they're not? Maybe took me at least to this place where where I understood that okay, this is I I I need to do what I need to do. So, and again, comparing uh, let's say the startup uh, with with my previous career, I guess that uh, starting with something new in the public sector or in politics is a building of a new startup. I mean, you have to find an allies and the corner uh, how to find support to, to some, let's say, even there are destructive ideas even in, in politics uh, some days. Uh, but uh, but in, in that, that sense, there are quite many uh, similarities in, in this world. But of course, I mean, doing uh, something uh, for your own and, and I mean, crossing borders and uh, and then scaling fast to different countries uh, this is something this is something totally different but i but i guess that, that, that we both have had um, let's say in that that's, a, that's one sense uh, quite interesting careers but also it has been let's say super international in in that sense so so we i, I guess that it's it's quite good to transform the experience from our previous lives to 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 fund a startup now so but for our listeners out there that don't understand the Estonian um, ecosystem for doing a startup, what what's the climate like? Is it is it a, a very receptive place to you know to, to people starting their own business? And what's what's the ecosystem like? Absolutely, I 
Estonia is definitely one one amazing place to to found a startup because the the kind of overall community really sticks together. There is even a you know if you want to understand more, there's a hashtag called uh, 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 Estonian Mafia. Uh, so um, to to kind of look 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 deeper. So since Estonia is so tiny country, uh, we always need to think that we need to be bigger than we are. And I think the mentality that most of the people in a uh, kind of an Estonian startup community share is that you can't only build a startup for Estonia because that would just you will not have enough customers. So, um, so in that sense, uh, uh, <laughs> I have my cat behind me. Sorry, <laughs> I saw that's good. Good shot. Good shot. <laughs> is he alive? <laughs> for anyone listening to this on Spotify right now, um, just just trying to get the cat out of the shop. Nothing to worry about. <laughs> No, sorry. So yeah, I was saying um, before we tried to kill the cat. Uh, <laughs> that, uh, we didn't try yeah. to kill any cats on this podcast. Let's just be clear: no cats were killed. Just we playing games. Just playing games. So um, uh, so yeah, it's it's a it's a great place. There's lots of support. There is a very very good community that uh, kind of helps you. Different uh, kind of accelerators, clubs, uh, uh, lots of lots of different events uh, where where you can get a very quick. Uh, update how to do things so only only thumbs up about um, about that so we got lots of help and the um i know you guys because the the tech stars london folks introduced us but um so, so was that a, a, an easy process how, how did that play out actually this started really interestingly so uh, uh we we weren't initially looking for uh, accelerator to go but we got this amazing uh, invite so they vis- they were vis- visiting Estonia so and why this was kind of hard was exactly on the day when we launched our our first products so literally uh, Kalle had to deal with some obvious uh, obvious uh, launching uh, launching surprises uh, when uh, then I, I I went to the interview and and it was like and they were like very shocked to understand that we actually came to the interview on the day we launched. So it was it was a very very nice, very fun fun kind of meeting. And, and from there we started to change quickly our minds that we really want to do it. Will really seems like a fantastic opportunity. And I think um, all the next steps afterwards were were really fun. So. so it's very early on. You you guys literally just launched the product. And so, what's what's the metric when you launch a product? What was that? What was that like? Was it you expecting millions of downloads on the first day, or how how did you launch? Yeah, it was still hundreds uh, on the first day. Uh, it's not precise. bad. Some people would take that. I yeah. think the Airbnb guys when they launched said they had like five people sign on, and two of them were friends, right? So. Yeah, yeah, and family. We had right. The rest was family. So. Right. <laughs> but anyway, I, I guess that uh, it was. Uh, it it went uh, quite well. I mean, I mean the launch in terms of uh, in terms of numbers and, and media coverage and, and the good feedback from the from the drivers because we were really solving one big problem in the in the let's say ride hailing space mm-hmm. and uh, just in a, in addition to the Estonian launch and uh, and connection with Techstars. So when we physically started in London in the end of. Uh, January, we had to launch uh, our next market. So, so basically, let's say uh, we have uh, textiles is connected with both of our launches mm-hmm. in, right. in that sense to share the attention between the program and, uh, and the everyday business uh, that we had to do. So, very symbolic, I guess. I mean, L- London has a big Uber community, so um, I'm sure your service really meant a lot to them when it came to town. So, I, I mean, I always like to ask within the podcast just the entrepreneurs that I'm interviewing, what their view is on whether entrepreneurs are born or bred. What do you guys think? I personally think it's both. Uh, I think, uh, you know, you need to be born a bit with a sense of curiosity or something that you you actually have. Uh, or one is curiosity, but the other thing I think most important is this stupid determination that you really, you know, it, you don't care, you just want to get it done you want to do it so i think this is probably a character i've seen in most entrepreneurs that they are very determined to follow their vision uh, but i think also why it's uh, kind of um, why the society or the kind of surroundings you're at uh, impacted a lot is uh, is the kind of to get it started i think this is always the kind of the first 
uh, crossing the threshold. I think this one is super important. Uh, and if that's done, then I think there's almost no, no stopping. I guess it's quite a philosophic one. So if you if we were born in, in the right place, then, then I would say uh, entrepreneurs are born. If you've read the Malcolm Gladwell Outliers, so basically, I mean, the environment as such influences quite a lot. So if you are born in an entrepreneurial mindset or family, then then I would say that you are born an entrepreneur. But but basically, by the end of the day, it's it's more breed uh, if 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 to ask correctly on the on the question. So so, but but yeah, it, the environment as such, it, will it be the country or the family or the community? It definitely influences influences very much, and all, of course, the education system and, and and schools around our children. Yeah, I like to ask the question because I, I like to break these kind of misunderstandings and I do think people say oh you know if you're an entrepreneur you're born an entrepreneur you can't become an entrepreneur and so I, I, I absolutely don't think that's true I think we're all born at zero personally so I always like to understand other people's views I love your answer I think it's actually very true environment make, environment makes a huge difference on that subject were, were your parents entrepreneurial mine, mine were um, are still yeah they, they, they still are yeah. hmm. Mine kind of not maybe so much so uh, but um, bits and pieces but uh, but yeah not not really. So. Mm. I just wonder uh, we're talking about the whole environment when you're growing up whether because my my parents were entrepreneurial for sure, um, but I wouldn't say that they had their, their the highs and lows within the experience. They wanted me to be a lawyer, so uh, you know sometimes if you have an entrepreneurial parents they try to breed you breed it out of you. <laughs> <laughs> They're like don't follow this path. It's very hard. to Become a lawyer. What do you guys think about luck? You want to there is, yeah, there okay. is, there is luck. I think I've been, I've been lucky in my life. I mean, having uh, good people um, around me. Will it be family, friends, partners in in in, in life? And, and in most of the cases, I've managed to let's say put all the different layers together. I mean, partners are becoming friends and family so so in in that sense uh, i i guess if we have this then we are lucky definitely so so and and this is luck as well to have let's say happy people supportive people uh, surrounding you so it doesn't matter what you do where you do or when you do but uh, but i mean the right people around you who uh, who believe in you and support you without conditions so it would be uh, it would be luck for me. And uh, what do you think, Hedy? Does luck play a role in success or, or is it all down to your skill? Uh, I think skill is one part that, uh, well, you know, I can't disagree with what Kala said about luck. So obviously this is definitely, we are all in a very lucky, lucky position to be in. But um, I still believe very much that um, uh, to really succeed, luck is just one fraction of everything. So it's it's a it's you you do need to work hard. Mm. Uh, I I very much believe that uh, to really succeed something, yeah, there might be few lucky in that sense. But uh, I think it's it is a hard work. It is very you need it requires determination. It requires in that sense lucky to have a support structure around you to help you to pick you up when you you kind of feel or or fall or whatever but it's more still you need to know what you want and you need to work work quite hard to to get it and everything else then it's i think one of the one of the things we learned i think the serendipity is a maybe better word than luck in a way but uh, but one of the things that i liked most and i really picked up while we were in Techstars was the engineered serendipity uh, so, so the thing that if you work hard and you are in surrounded uh, and you bring yourself being surrounded more and more with different uh, uh, people that could potentially, you know, uh, help you in one way or, or you can't, might end up in some lucky situation, that's, that's more the kind of luck I believe in. But it's definitely those three elements combine hard work, uh, bringing yourself into, into the surroundings where you can actually succeed and also then just some some luck your business uh, where is it today and and do you think you've had a big break in business 
Yeah, then we were actually discussing that question. I'm, 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 yeah, you can answer that. I, I'm not really big. It, it's hard to say when you have a break in business. It's, uh, it depends where you put your ambition to. So I think maybe my ambition level is still, I need to still climb a few more steps before I can say that I, I made a break. But maybe it's that something very Estonian as well, kind of a bit humble, humbleness in, in everything you do. And not. So... I, I, I guess that uh, we, we briefly uh, spoke about uh, that before, so uh, the big break probably. I, I guess that we had uh, two uh, breaks uh, when starting with our business, and the next break is somewhere ahead of us, but, uh, but uh, definitely the, the, the first break was that, uh, that we, we uh, we, we gathered the test group to test our product and, and people were ready to uh, uh, actually pay for the product that they were testing. So, so that already gave us uh, quite, good, uh, quite a good feeling uh, in the beginning that we have done something that, that, that really has a, let's say, a product market fit. And when the days that we, that we launched, then we really had, let's say, a, in that sense, compared with Airbnb, a massive massive flow of, uh, of new users and uh, policies that were uh, that were bought so so and, 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 and we've been growing since that so even even during the the, the covid crisis so so we saw that uh, that let's say uh, uh, new new customer wise uh, we we didn't drop uh, that much as as many of the startups did so, so we still had we still had income and we still had new people that, uh, that downloaded our app and started using our solution because, uh, because the, the product is, is something that you, you still need during the crisis as well. Well, in a way, exactly March was actually our best ever month, which was in the middle of COVID. And, and the reasoning was exactly that lots of people in those markets where we're at uh, cancelled their existing kind of fixed uh, fixed uh, policies and, and change them into becoming more of this dynamic price. So. And how did you get this idea? It's, it's a long story. Uh, mm -hmm. while, uh, while I was in, uh, in, in politics, so, so I was promoting the idea that Estonia should become the first country who would say to Uber that uh, you're welcome. Uh, because most of the countries in the EU at that time were, were saying to Uber that we have our traditional taxi sector and uh, some American company which is uh, dealing with, with ride-sharing is not, uh, not welcome to, to our country. And that was connected to the idea for Estonia to become a sandboxing uh, environment for, uh, for the global startups to, to, to try to find what would be the best... Uh, best uh, possible uh, regulation for that kind of uh, companies and then to have let's say basically copy based system to to other countries as well of course with a bit of fine tuning for every different uh, legal framework but basically the idea would be would be there and uh, let's say we were the first or let's say Estonia was the first to start with it but the second to to uh, to to have the uh, proper regulation which came into force and currently it's been copied to eight uh, different EU countries and and, uh, and today uh, there are discussions on uh, on uh, EU level or let's say European Commission level that uh, should we should we use this uh, once Estonian example to have the Europe wide uh, regulation for that. This was uh, this was the start of the of the long story, but uh, but it ended up this way that uh, that we had uh, let's say most liberalized uh, regulation uh, services started to boom. We uh, we had uh, our own Estonian startup Taxify, which is now Bolt, and then it was just today announced that uh, or a few days ago announced that uh, that. Um, that it's uh, it, it became the hottest uh, unicorn uh, in in Europe, and uh, during the COVID crisis, they 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 uh, raised they raised hundred million euros and, and and so on. So so basically, we had companies, we had uh, massive demand on the customer side, uh, service providing from the from the driver side, but the insurance companies uh, weren't able to uh, provide. 
uh, endurance for the proper price. And their idea actually was to protect the, the let's say, prices that they initially gave for, uh, for full-time uh, taxis. But obviously the risk isn't the same. So for, the, for a driver who probably drives three hours per day just after uh, their main job, is not willing to buy five times higher insurance policy that, 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 that uh, let's say, full-time taxi drivers were, were uh, buying. And that's, that's when we, Hedy, then we, we, with Hedy, started to uh, realize that, uh, that if something isn't happening here, then this good story of a, of a let's say, flagship of sharing economy and so on and so on will, will disappear because... Uh, there, there won't be enough drivers to, to, to fit in this picture with this, uh, to, uh, let's say, ridiculously expensive insurance pricing. But the, but the reasoning why it was ridiculously expensive, it wasn't purely. That there was also a very practical reason because, uh, because you know, geek economy and the geek workers, pre, uh, freelance workers, there's very little loyalty towards one platform only which means that whatever they do, their data and their kind of work, uh, work schedule and everything is distributed. So if we take the, take the ride hailing that uh, our, our customer base today, so half of the drivers drive on uh, other many platforms at the same time, which means that it, it, it became very hard for the insurance companies to understand if this person is, as Kala said, drives one hour or two hours a day as more, more closer to their regular driver, or they, they provide service uh, uh, full-time uh, I don't know, 20, 20 hours a day. Uh, so they, they didn't know that. So they had to price them all the same. This is basically the core uh, logic of, of our product. Uh, we aggregate together the data from all the platforms operating in the, in the market, which, which then gives a very different view and, and understanding how a certain uh, gig worker or ride hailer then works. So we know if they work very little time or they work longer hours and, and what's their kind of agenda if they work on more riskier times or, or, or just so so that that kind of data was completely and is in most markets still missing so so this is something we do and we we bring it together and we help to have a very different risk profiling for them the, for the for the driver and by that this enables us to to help with together with our underwriter to to really price the price the drivers much better. And that's that's the kind of solution what we what we understood. And the, the core thinking of it is actually looking things from the perspective of the driver, of the individual, which is then the kind of person centricity that we we strongly believe will become more and more norm, not only in a sharing economy, but also in other areas. So today it is still rather statistic based, obviously going going more deeper, but but the kind of shift that we need to look things from a different perspective is, is something we, we, we very much share and, and, and how the whole kind of logic came together, basically. It's interesting that there's an event um, coming up um, around like smart cities, the future of cities, and a big part of it is where Amazon just bought this company that's got no drivers at all, right? I mean, it's all about automation. Um, what, what's, your, what's your view on that future? We actually... A few weeks ago, we injured the first self-driving bus uh, in, in in Estonia. So, uh, so wow, what was, that, <laughs> what was that like? It was uh, it it was quite an interesting moment. So, so I mean, to have um, to have that kind of innovation on board. So, so it was just to tell the story. It's an uh, it's an Estonian uh, startup as well. Uh, the, a self-driving bus that's developed together with Estonian universities and also got support from uh, from from European Commission and it's the first let's say self-driving bus that's registered in Estonia and uh, and we were the company that uh, that injured them so so it means that we truly believe in in that kind of uh, that kind of future but it it takes time still and probably the let's say self-driving vehicles are not those that are replacing let's say our our usual traffic in uh, in highways it's probably like it starts more from from let's say closed areas some uh, some let's say university campus uh, campuses business districts and and so on and so on so uh, and and it's let's say uh, 
gradually though. Gradually is is moving towards uh, cities as well, and, and maybe let's say replacing some of some roots of the of the let's say different kind of let's say public transportation, which which we know uh, nowadays. Yeah, but what we we are. Uh, we will be ready for that as well, one way or another, because one is that we, we, you know, having a driver with a right hailer, but but there's also very different ways when this kind of dynamically pricing uh, of, of insurance uh, plays out. It's also the kind of car sharings. Well, we don't today uh, ha- have that online. We have the product very much uh, ready, but it's it's more on the question uh, because that already requires a bit different ways of looking, but it's also when we know the individuals who are driving and, and understand their kind of behavior in many ways, it's, it's again a whole new ways of looking at things. So, and that's, that's where we want to master it. It's fascinating. I, I remember I, I was um, running an accelerator with Nissan out of Asia and yeah. uh, part of that accelerator, they had a large insurance company come in and, and look to support the startups. But what was fascinating is the insurance company um, head just did not think drive, driverless cars were going to happen. And they just didn't see the insurance system working um, because it, you know who who's responsible for getting the insurance, right? I mean, and who who who's who's the person you're going to claim against, and who's liable because the machine will make a decision, right? So it's fascinating to me. Um, this is only three or four years ago. You know, fascinating today to be talking to you guys, where you you're preparing for that future, which is definitely coming. So yeah. it's, it's fascinating that uh, you know, people that don't see it uh, will lose out. But I, I think it's um, I think it's definitely coming. I, do, I was just interested uh, very briefly. I don't. I, I know um, this sort of stuff can go on for a long time. But the education side of what you guys, your education. Do you think your education helped you do what you're doing today? I think mine indeed. I, I studied information sciences. So uh, and I also kind of mixed it together from many universities. So I wasn't um, probably the favorite person from my university because I took lots of. Uh, I, I changed lots of subjects around, but uh, all in all, I think it did. I think the overall understanding of, of exactly data and information and how how that kind of works and, and how to kind of um, uh, how to use it uh, for the benefit uh, and, and uh, of, of a person and how to structure it. That, that definitely was very beneficial. Also, everything connected with uh, online digital, you know. Google's everything on that side, so that uh, that kind of gave a very different view, probably different ways of looking at at, at the world. So um, I definitely, in my education, kind of um, helped out. I learned environmental sciences, so I, I guess that um, of course uh, everything you learn helps you uh, helps you, let's say, uh, at, at at least in 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 some some field, although. <laughs> I graduated uh, while I was already in the parliament, so so basically uh, I had to I had to do uh, two times uh, two two things at the, at the same time, and, and then I guess that the future of education should be something something similar that that we don't spend uh, so much years in a row in the, in the university, but let's say spend some time in university, practice it. Back to the university, back practice it because the as the technology changes so fast, so there is no point actually to spend uh, probably four years in a row in, uh, in 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 doing one thing and maybe something that you learn from on on your first year could be useless on on the on the first year when you go to the labor market. So, yeah, but it's, it's exactly that, as you said as well. The thinking, the overall kind of conceptual ways of looking things that definitely was important, but obviously and how to build a startup or how to, you know, something very practical or how you be a parliament <laughs> member, you will not so obviously learn from, from there. So that's uh, self-learning, but maybe that's also part of what you learn in when you, when you go deeper in your education. So. It's, it, it was one funny thing that, uh, that the chairman of uh, Nokia, Risto Silasma, said uh, a year ago in, in one, one gathering, uh, he said that we should put... Uh, an expiry date for our uh, university diploma. So it means that, uh, that uh, again, as, as everything is changing, so you have to upskill yourself time to time. So it doesn't mean that your, 20, your uh, diploma 
from which you get 20 years ago could uh, still uh, mean anything for you. So, so, and I, I, I'm, I'm a true, let's say, believer in this uh, education as a lifestyle. So you always have to upskill yourself with a, with a, with a little pieces, and it, it would, it would probably help, um, help uh, have, have the, let's say, good effect in, in the society as well, because then we don't have to deal with, uh, with, with the results already that uh, suddenly we have, let's say, thousands of people or hundreds of thousands of people who are not upskilled themselves uh, in, 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 in the time that they should have done it. And, and then we wouldn't probably have the discussions around us that robots are going to replace the jobs and, and then somebody is going, coming to protect the jobs, which don't, let's say, there, there is no sense to... Uh, or no meaning to protect the jobs. These people can do something else which is more meaningful and, and more effective and, and so on and so on. So then these processes would be much smoother mm -hmm. if we would have this education as a lifestyle mind mindset. Interesting. I, I like. I know a lot of my audience are, are you know making decisions whether you know to drop out of university, like some of their heroes have done in in the startup world you know like the mark zuckerbergs of this world who have dropped out not that he might be their pe people's hero but dropped out of university and, and left their education bill gates dropped out left his education behind you know so there's so many stories of entrepreneurs that have done that and i think that there is a big burden certainly in the uk where people get into so much debt that when they come out the other side with their education they can't go do a startup easily because they've got that debt to pay off but i, I don't know what the setup is like in estonia is is, is the university education a debt-led thing or not well it's you know depends uh, there there are quite l large number of free positions as well as what you can uh, qualify to so and then you have the obviously also some positions where you have to pay your own tuition yeah, I'm lost, sorry, <laughs> lost the word. So your tuition. Tuition, uh, I know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I'd like to, um, I, I can actually talk to you guys forever. I, I want to get more into like how you manage to do university and work in parliament at the same time, but maybe I can have you on for another time to get into all of that stuff. But, but just to end the podcast, because I know our listeners only have a certain amount of time. If you went back to your younger selves and gave some advice now, you know, based on what you're doing today and what you know, what would you have given advice wise to your younger selves? Oh, we'll have to do it quite soon. So, <laughs> <laughs> From my side, I, um, I I think two things probably. One is that uh, really to trust myself uh, even more than I maybe have, um, because I think most of the things that I already knew that I'm gonna do or what I wanna want to do, I knew um, much much where where I was quite young. So, um, but but also um, so so basically just just kind of uh, do things. But but I also like the approach I took that I. I, I try to educate myself in not only university device, but also like uh, actually get different experience and, and but never lose the kind of vision of wanting to do something on my own. So there is never, and, and, and maybe the other part is that don't ever think that there's too late to do something. So if, you know, I think this is kind of the, maybe the, the two thoughts that uh, I, I would kind of keep in mind. One is really that just, you know, Trust yourself, do it, and and when you have made other decisions, there is always a good time to just uh, stop everything, come back and do what your dream is, but make sure you don't uh, lose it. So keep it in mind what you want to achieve, and, and you'll always do it. So. Yeah, I'll I'll echo what uh, what Heli said. So about uh, following the dreams and believing yourself, I think this is this is the cornerstone. Uh, that we have to that uh, to give uh, to our 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 yet yeah, let's say younger selves and and, and, and children and, uh, and everybody surrounding us. But uh, but also when I was young, let's say uh, in the beginning of uh, let's say uh, a country that uh, just regained its uh, its independence. So so there was still the let's say mindset in the society that there are certain jobs that will give you, let's say, good income in the future. And there are certain jobs that, uh, that you don't have to learn. But, uh, but currently, I, I guess that whatever you do, if you put uh, 
energy and hard work to it, so you will succeed anyway. So, so we we see more and more, let's say, youngsters that try to pick, let's say, something from from everywhere, and then this probably doesn't work. So you have to focus on something, and and here sky is the limit. So there is no certain list to to focus on. I think that if you if if you are good in something, you have a tremendous career ahead of you. Yeah, that will definitely help you to kind of I'd say I'm not going to tell the anecdote, but this one for the next time when we talk about um, other things. But uh, it, it's more like don't listen to the people that bring you down. You know that, that tells you that it's not possible, or just stay away from these kind of people. If you know, I think this is this is probably one of the one of one of the advice to really keep. And if you if you know what you want, then avoid those people that say tell you that you can't do it or it's impossible or something like that. So. I think that advice will resonate with a lot of my listeners. I think a lot of people that have ideas or want to follow their dreams do get told to uh, toe the line and, and uh, it's not possible and so on. So good advice to your younger selves and uh, to the audience. Thank you so much. Well, well, guys, again, thank you so much for joining. Thanks for sharing your story. We'll, uh, we'll be following you. I'll make sure that your business links are in the bottom here. So if there's anybody out there that needs a, a, a good uh, company to help them in their insurance, then uh, you make sure they can get in contact with you. Thank you so much for taking the time out to share your story and share your insight. I hope to have you on again in the future. Our pleasure. Thanks for Thank inviting you. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Good Luck Club podcast. We know you have thousands of podcasts you could be listening to and you've chosen us. We, of course, feel lucky. If you want to hear more, please go to thegoodluckpod.com or go to any of our social media pages and share with us your views, your insights and any way that we can improve what we're doing to make it a better experience for you. We wish you the best of luck.